In this video, I'm going to go over the anatomy of the coronary arteries. So let's get started. The role of the coronary arteries is to supply your heart muscle, hence your myocardium, with fresh oxygenated blood. And this allows your heart muscle to continue pumping blood throughout your body. Now there are two main coronary arteries you want to remember. We have the right coronary artery, and from your view on the screen, it's on the left side over there. And then we have the left coronary artery, which is over here on your right side. And these coronary arteries go to the right and left side of the heart and they branch off into smaller arteries to supply that myocardium. So first let's go over the right coronary artery. Here is an anterior view of the heart. So we're talking about a front view of the heart and our right coronary artery comes off the ascending aorta. And remember from our heart blood flow video that our aorta is sort of that last part of the sequence of the heart blood flow because it's that structure that's taking all that fresh oxygenated blood that came from the left side and it's going to pump it all throughout the body. And this is where our ascending aorta is coming from. So our right and our left coronary arteries come out of this structure. So our right coronary artery is going to go and mainly supply the right side of the heart. And it's going to branch off into smaller arteries. And one of those arteries that we're going to cover first is the sinoatrial node artery. Now let the name of some of these arteries help you because it's going to tip you off with what they supply. So the sinoatrial node artery supplies the SA node in most people. And remember, our SA node is that first part of the electrical conduction system. It helps create that P wave in our ECG waveform. And then if we go down a little bit, you can see the atrial branch, which is going to branch off and supply our right and left atria. Then just really across the street, another little branch is called the right conus. And this area is going to supply parts of that right ventricle. Then as we travel a little bit more down through that right coronary artery, we can branch off into the right anterior ventricle branch and again let the name help you this artery branch is going to help supply that right ventricle and then we're going to go down a little bit with that right coronary artery and it's going to split off into a big branch it's going to split off into the right marginal artery now this artery is going to go down and it's actually going to go towards the apex of the heart and it's going to be a big supplier of our right ventricle and notice where these arteries are setting if we were able to slice this heart open and we could see that we can see the atria, we can see the ventricles and see that these arteries indeed do supply them. So whenever you're trying to remember what they supply, just think about what's behind that muscle that they actually supply. And then from here, our right coronary artery is going to turn into another big branch that you want to remember known as the posterior descending artery. Now this artery also has another name known as the posterior interventricular artery. So if you see that name as well, it's also talking about this artery, which can be extremely confusing if you're not familiar with the coronary artery. So keep that in mind that there's two different names for this. And what this artery does, it leaves our anterior side and it goes to the posterior side, so the back of the heart, and it's going to go downward. So hence, that's sort of why we call it that. Now this artery is going to supply several things. It's going to supply our right and left ventricle. It's going to supply our intraventricular septum, which is that wall that separates the ventricles. And in some people, it can supply the AV node, which is the other part of our electrical conduction system. Now an interesting thing about the anatomy of the coronary artery arteries is that not everyone is the same, especially when we're talking about the points of origin where some of these arteries come off. For instance, this posterior descending artery. In most people, this artery comes off of the right coronary artery. And whenever that happens, we say that they have a right dominant heart. However, in a smaller group of people, this artery will actually come off of the left coronary artery. And whenever that happens, we say that they have a left dominant heart. So as you study the anatomy of the coronary arteries, just keep that in mind. Now let's take a look at the left coronary artery. So here we're again still looking at the anterior view of the heart so our front view and just like the right coronary artery the left coronary artery comes off of the ascending aorta and it's going to turn into two main branches with smaller branches and one of those big branches is called the circumflex artery so notice this artery comes off of our left coronary artery and it's going to hence circle or wrap around onto that posterior side 
So let the name of this artery help you. It's called circumflex. Circum means like circle. So it goes onto that posterior side and it's going to supply our left atrium and some of our left ventricle. Now this circumflex artery also has smaller branches that come off of it. These branches are known as the left marginal branches. You may also hear them called obtuse and they're on that posterior side of the heart. So that's why you see those little dashed lines that's telling us it's on the anterior, but the posterior side, so the back side of the heart. And they're gonna help supply the left ventricle and they extend down to our apex. Then going back onto the anterior part of our heart, so our front view, we have again that left coronary artery, but we have another big branch of that left coronary artery known as the left anterior descending artery. It's also called the LAD. You can also hear it referred to as the anterior interventricular artery. Now this artery has a big job because it supplies our intraventricular septum, so that wall in between those ventricles, along with the left ventricle, some parts of the right ventricle, and the bundle branches, which were part of our electrical conduction system. Now this artery, if it becomes blocked, can cause major damage. You may have heard of a term in the past, the widow maker. Well, whenever they're talking about the widow maker, this is the artery that they're talking about. Because if this artery got a blockage in it, a big blockage that really blocked blood flow completely, we can damage our heart muscle to the point where it doesn't want to work anymore because this artery supplies the left ventricle. Our left ventricle plays a huge role in pumping that fresh oxygenated blood up through the aorta which goes throughout the body. So we don't want to damage that structure. Now this left anterior descending artery also has its own little branches. If you notice we have a branch coming off, it's coming off in like a diagonal fashion off that LAD. These are known as the diagonal branches. And these branches are going to come off and they're going to help supply that left ventricle. And then over just a little bit up, we have some branches coming off that LAD known as the septal branches. And let its name help you because these branches help supply mainly that intraventricular septum. And as you can tell how they're running off the LAD, that is about where our interventricular septum is located. In addition, this branch also supplies another part of the electrical conduction system known as the bundle of his. Now these coronary arteries are extremely important for our heart health because as you've just seen here, these coronary arteries feed our heart muscle. So one thing we don't want to happen is that there's some type of blockage that gets in there and limits blood flow to that myocardium because whenever that happens, it can lead to a myocardial infarction. So that is why it's really important to know the anatomy of these arteries, what they supply. Now in my previous video, I talked about the different types of angina and the treatments. So if you are studying this topic, you may want to check out this video after you're done with this one. Okay, so that wraps up this video on the anatomy of the coronary arteries. And don't forget to access the free quiz that will test you on this material in the description below.